Hello and welcome again to this edition of Meet the Candidates 2020 on WCMU Public TV. I'm David Nicholas and we are speaking this year with our guests virtually, joined this time by Valerie Willis. She is the U.S. TPM candidate for the United States Senate. We welcome you and in our first moment or two, a, a little bit about yourself, uh, your background and experience you bring to the campaign. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be at WCMU, which is uh, my alma mater for my master's degree in education administration. So I love CMU. Um, I'm Valerie L. Willis, candidate for United States Senate, constitutional conservative for Congress. My website is Willis, F-O-R spelled out, willisforcongress.com. I am the only proven Republican conservative record in the race. I was Trump co-chair in 2016, and we, along with another county in Michigan, uh, flung the whole state over for Trump. And uh, personally, I did 3,500 doors and I went out and met you, the voter. And when I talked to you there, I realized there was a huge discrepancy between what the politicians were stating we wanted, needed, and what you stated you wanted, needed. You said you wanted good jobs, good medical care, a wonderful educational system, and a chance to buy a house. And that is why today, four years later, I'm running for you. Um, so we helped flip the state to Trump. I helped to create a teenage Republican conservative group in Sheboygan County called the TARS, the first of its kind in Michigan. I was their advisor for two years, so I support the youth of our state. I also earned three college degrees, finishing with a master's in education administration. I have raised three children in the public schools and on multiple continents as the 16 year member as a military wife for the US Navy. So I know the schools, I know the history of education and I know how to get Michigan back on track as number one in education in the nation. So I've been a Navy spouse for 16 years. Um, I love our military men and women. I took care of my disabled veteran husband for over 10 years and I helped him acquire his pension. So I also know the VA system very well. I have two active duty warrior sons uh, serving on the front line right now for you and me. And I'm proud of my uh, two sons. I'm a grandmother of six and a mother of three. And my campaign motto is prosperity, freedom, and then peace. If we look then at, you mentioned in the 2016 campaign, uh, hearing from the voters uh, regarding jobs, medical care, and schools, uh, now as candidate here in 2020 and speaking again with those prospective voters, would you still identify those as the top three issues of this campaign? I would, sir, because of uh, also with the addition of the COVID debacle with our state as our governor is the first governor in the history of Michigan to shut down our economy because of a virus. It has hit the average person on the street even harder. We have multiple unemployment claims not paid. We have businesses shut down and closed that may never open again. So it is the top three. And um, also as a farmer for 20 years and an insurance agent for over 11 years, I am uniquely suited with the language and science of insurance to, I have solved the health education, health uh, coverage problem in our US Senate that they can't seem to agree to. So um, I am the candidate of the hour and should be the choice of Michigan to solve the healthcare issue that we seem to be having and also protect pensions, get our jobs rolling again for the, for the individual and independent business owner in Michigan. There, there has been no help for them at all. Because if you don't have a certain number of employees, you've got no cares. For instance, you know, John James got a loan for a million dollars or a grant for a million dollars. And there's other, other businesses in Michigan that um, have gotten nothing. So there's still a huge disparity with businesses trying to pick themselves back up again. So yes, I think those are the top, top three issues along with buying a home. Many people would love to own a home and they can't because of student loan debt or up and down with a job because of COVID again. So it's, it's been very hard on the individual person in Michigan. Well, let's look specifically at, at the jobs issue then, your specific and direct proposals for um, what is now going to be uh, a changed economy as, as we finally do at some point emerge from COVID-19 and not only the, the, the reshaping, but obviously the restart and picking up with the economic impact that we have seen what do you specifically propose? Well, the Willis plan included a check for 25,000 to each individual person from 18 on up in Michigan to make them make up for the losses that they've suffered over the past six months. And as a licensed insurance agent, we use insurance for every loss that we have, but the average person has no coverage for a pandemic. 
And so we're just taking the hit. And uh, I see a lot of young people with families and children not making it. And so a boost of 25,000, we're in the House and the Senate right now arguing about how much millions we're gonna give to states to bail them out, yet the individual hasn't heard from our, our federal government at all, and certainly not from our state government. So 25,000 would go toward correcting the wrongs of the last six months. Then we have to move into how are we gonna create all these jobs? Well, the strength of Michigan is a small business. And so I'm proposing, if not through the banking structure that could do it the easiest, start out with micro loans of $250 per person. Now you don't need to qualify uh, uh, credit wise or any, any way to get this loan. If you take out 250, you have a certain amount of time to pay it back and you pay it back with a little bit of interest. If you do that, you can qualify for the $500 loan and just let each person build their own way out of their recession by starting a little business in their home. And we have many people already in Michigan doing this, but they're doing it with no support. So they're struggling. Um, as far as two then as retooling and retraining, because we'll also need to do that. Debbie Stabenow took 17 million in, a, in the ag bill and put in a uh, corporate 5G. What I wanted to do with that 17 million was to give everyone in Michigan who wanted it free training, a free two year college degree, certificate program, automotive, welding, secretarial, all people could participate in that to start a new career based on the new job opportunities we have now. So that would run um, a whole bunch toward getting Michigan back on track again, getting people thinking about themselves and their economy again. And um, I'm, I'm actually getting a lot of traffic from everyone every day, all, all my supporters of, of different ideas. So the biggest thing I wanna do though uh, if I'm elected to the U.S. Senate, and this is big in this regard for all these three things here, is I want to do county quality circles. And what I mean by that is when I go to Washington and I'm there working, my doors and phones are open. I listen to everybody, but I'm going to come back and sit down with the people, county by county, region by region. And they're going to tell me how they want me to vote in D.C. on the topics that are on the, on the agenda as that goes. So this is going to be, I represent a very representative a U.S. Senate seat directly for the people. I'm not going there to enact my own ideas. I'm going there to enact the people's ideas. You also cited uh, medical care, and, and obviously we've seen not only the public health uh, impact of this, but also when it comes to the ideas of uh, preparedness and perhaps some need to look at health care in a, in a broader scope because of the focus COVID-19 has put on that. What are your specific proposals there? Well, as a licensed insurance agent of 11 years and an agency owner, I deal with companies and individuals on a daily basis to help them solve these problems. So I'm a what's called a transition expert and a wealth builder. And we uh, in America spend more on healthcare than any other nation. Yet why is the US medical system such a cost-effective disaster? The answer is that our healthcare system is really a disease care system. It focuses on the management of illness rather than on the prevention of the disease and the prevention, promotion of health. But the vast majority of our national health is influenced by factors over which this disease-based approach has little control, such as nutrition, stress, societal problems, and environmental toxins. Consequently, in the absence of effective prevention, our present disease care system can never truly create a healthy society. Recent study shows that at least 50% of deaths and 70% of disease in America are still self-inflicted, caused by an epidemic of unhealthy habits, including improper diet, inadequate exercise, smoking, and alcohol abuse. Thus, the vast majority of disease is preventable. Now, what I'm doing is I'm, pro I'm proposing a healthcare um, savings account, which is uh, available now, prevalent now, and it's used as an investment tool for employers who, so take for example, that the employee is employed, the employer would put in half, the employee would put in half, and the money stays with the employee. Wherever the employee goes or wherever the employee is employed, that health savings account travels with them and builds. It's a compounding interest savings account. So if you're in good health and you're a young person, you don't use it, the money accrues and it keeps building. If you're in poor health and you need more money, I mean, there's state support for that. So let's say someone is on Medicaid or, or of a lower economic stature, they can be fully funded by the state and get the same access to the same medical care that that person who pays for it does. Same with Medicare and same with the veterans. 
I watched my husband struggle for 10 years in the VA system, not very, not getting well, just on an endless cycle of appointments. But if he had had a health savings account and a gold card, because they give you a, it goes with a checking account and a credit card, you can go all 50 states. Go, we want our veterans to go get well. Let's give them the tools to go get well. Watch the dramatic drop in cost after a veteran gets well. We, we don't want to keep them sick. So um, my plan is exists now. It's, it's already in process. There's already businesses and individuals using it. And it's, um, it solves the problem because it focuses on health. And so by focusing on health, we can save many billions of dollars over time. Um, then also this health savings account can convert to a long-term care policy. You can use it for long-term care. And someone my age, I'm 54, if I were to buy a long-term care policy right now, it would be over $900 a month. And there's no way you can afford that. So if we start with everyone with this health savings account, then let people use it as they need it. It solves all kinds of health care and health related problems. Two minutes left with you, ma'am, and we do want to uh, give you the last 30 seconds for a final message. Uh, but let's look at the specific proposals then that you would make regarding um, education and our schools. Education, uh, when I was growing up, uh, we were number one in the nation in Michigan in schools. We provided a classical education. And the key was that it was a local curriculum created by parents of that county and the school district of that county. So every county was unique, but they did things that the students were interested in, the parents would support, and the teachers were open to work with the parents and the students to create a quality curriculum that also met state and federal guidelines, but it was a very creative time. My experience with creative learning class, and this is what I would love to offer all students everywhere, all over the state, is I was in what was called a creative learning class from fourth grade through sixth. We got to go at our own speed. The human mind and the human ability to learn, everyone has their own pace. Some are slower, then we get the mead average, and then we got the higher performing. And the children should be able to go through and uh, create, uh, finish this curriculum as they can. So when I got done with sixth grade, I had finished half of high school, all right? And unfortunately, they didn't keep funding the program or I would have finished high school a few years after that. So if we start building these incentives into the program, this creativeness and the student's ability to go at their own speed, we won't have behavior problems. We won't have um, problems with between parents and teachers to the degree we have now fighting over curriculum and core and all, this, all these other fights and battles that we're doing now. It'll be a very creative, exciting time again in our educational history, and we will lead the nation again in education. In our last 30 seconds, then, uh, with you, Valerie Willis, the message you would leave with the voters as they get set to go to the polls. Well, for the last four years, it's been an honor getting to know everyone in Michigan, and I've also got to know my two opponents very well as well. John James is a voting Democrat running on the Republican Party. His history is well known in the Detroit area. I have several newspaper articles on my website that you can look at. John James, or, uh, Gary Peters is also a Democrat, but he's gotten more radicalized over time. He's become a socialist Democrat. Uh, Gary has had 29 years in politics. And if he's not impressed you now or you don't remember his name, it's because he's become irrelevant. The people in Michigan have changed their, their minds about Gary. John James, while he is trying very hard, he has not put a child through school yet. He has many people donating millions of dollars to him that are going to tell him what to do. Valerie Willis is the only proven conservative due to my track record. And I have the heart of the people in my best interest. And it's really up to the voter uh, this November 3rd to determine who you want and what kind of a U.S. senator you want. But just remember, this is a very powerful seat next to the presidency, and you want to keep the Senate conservative. So vote Willis, and thank you very much. And thank you for speaking with us and to uh, the voters across Michigan who will be casting uh, ballots soon for that uh, U.S. Senate seat. Uh, good luck with the rest of the campaign. Stay safe, and thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, sir, for the honor and privilege of being here today. We have been speaking with Valerie Willis, the U.S. TPM candidate for the United States Senate. A reminder that under Michigan election law, all qualifying party candidates for these offices were invited to participate in this series. I'm David Nicholas. On behalf of all of us, please do get out and exercise your right to vote on Tuesday, November 3rd.